Hey guys, Pete here. Today I've got a recap of The Expanse Season 4. We go through one of the ring gates, leaving our solar system, the soul system, behind. On a mission to Illus or New Terra, depending on who you're talking to, and with James Holden acting as an emissary for the UN. The Rossi and its crew are uniquely suited for this job because of their experience with the protomolecule. After the Eros incident, humanity has a healthy fear of the blue goo, and this new planet has large ruins that appear to have been built by the protomolecule, or at the very least, the beings that created it. Before we dive in, this is your spoiler warning. This video will discuss everything that happens in The Expanse through Season 4. If you're not caught up, then this video won't be for you. Additionally, I've read all the available books and novellas from The Expanse series, but I won't include any future book spoilers in this video. With that out of the way, let's get to it. I don't want to spend too much time focused on how we got to where we're at in this video, but I do think this quote from the end of the season 3 finale sets things up for the fourth season perfectly. After the events that happened in the slow zone are wrapped up, we see a montage of what all the different characters are doing as the ships are transiting back through the ring into the soul system. In that we see a vision of Holden standing on a beach, where he says, You've given us a new frontier. 1300 habitable systems on the other side of those rings. You know we're going to go, we won't be able to resist. It's going to be another blood soaked gold rush. He continues, when you connected me to the station I saw something. The civilization that built the rings is gone, wiped out. What could have killed them? To that, Miller responds, that's what I'd like to know. Gonna need a ride. So the first part of that is a description of where we're at in the beginning of Season 4. Rings that lead to 1300 new habitable planets. This is game changing and we see how all the different factions are looking at it early in Season 4. The Barbapacola, a ship full of refugees from Ganymede, passes through a ring gate and they run a blockade. At the UN we see that Avasarala doesn't really want this to happen, she doesn't want everyone to just rush through the rings, and she's getting some pressure from other members of the council. The Belters see an opportunity to get a seat at the table by repurposing the behemoth into Medina Station so that they can help control the entry point to the rings. So that faction of the OPA has entered into an agreement with the Inners, and together they are enforcing the blockade. Holden makes it back to Earth, he visits his family, and while he's there, he sees what we'll call Proto Miller, who encourages him to go through the ring. Later, he'll meet with Avasarala. She tells him about the Barba Picola and the fact that they're on this new planet mining lithium. She gives him the mission to go find out what's going on with the planet because of these large ruins that look like they were built by the Proto Molecule. He accepts, he fills in the crew, and we learn that Naomi says that she's going to the surface when they arrive. This is a big deal because she's a belter and she's going to have to prepare to be able to go down the well. So as the Rossi makes its way back to the ring gates, she works on that. We see an exchange with Amos talking to Clarissa Mao. We learn that she's serving a life sentence back on Earth and that the two of them formed a friendship on the way back from the slow zone. We also see Alex contact Bobby, who's on Mars staying with her brother and having a hard time readjusting to a civilian life. Through a series of animation screens, we see that Proto Miller is investigating the remnants of the Proto Molecule. He says he's reaching out, reaching out. So we have the conclusion of Miller's story going on in the background. In the foreground, we have a conflict between the refugees who made it to Illus first and a corporation called Royal Charter Energy. In desperation, the refugees ran the blockade, so they're technically not supposed to be there. Their point of view is that they made it there, they discovered the lithium, they started to mine it, and now this is their new home. The RCE has a charter issued by the UN, but in reality, they only got that because the Belters made it to the surface first. They look at the Belters as squatters, and it's this kind of situation where nobody's really 100% right. That's a big part of the reason that Abasarla sent the Rosinante there. There's a lot riding on what happens on this planet, and as we see as things develop, there's a million things that could go wrong here. The leader of the RCE group is Adolphus Mercury, who is a very abrasive character, and because he has this charter, he would never look at what they're doing as being legitimate under any circumstances. 
Things go wrong immediately when the RCE shuttle crashes on its approach. This was due in part to bad timing. The Belgers had a plan to buy themselves some time by destroying this landing pad. Basically, they knew this corporate interest was going to be moving in and they wanted to slow them down. While they were putting that plan into action, the shuttle arrived, and rather than aborting the mission, they went through with it, killing a lot of innocent people in the process. And we're introduced to a lot of characters inside of this conflict, but I don't want to spend a lot of time on their backgrounds or who they are because a lot of them are sort of one season arcs. It is worth mentioning here, though, that not everyone that's with Murtry is in lockstep with his ideas. He has a work group of scientists that are along for the ride that are there to study the new planet. The most important of those is L.V. Okoye, who is an exobiologist. She ends up working with both sides, the Belters and RCE, and also the Rossi and its crew. When they arrive, we see Naomi on the surface for the first time, breathing free air, seeing an horizon. She ends up struggling to adapt, and it emphasizes part of the problem that the ring gates present to Belters as a whole. As we see with the refugees, some of them are able to adapt, but even someone like Naomi, who seems like a fine physical specimen, and we saw that she worked hard in order to get ready, still can't easily transition to being on the planet. While the crew of the Rossi is there to kind of make sure things don't get out of hand, they also unwittingly brought active proto-molecule with them on the ship. Later, we'll learn that that's why Holden sees Proto-Miller, and it's all part of his directive. You know, back on Earth, he said he wanted him to go through the ring. This is all part of the proto-molecule doing what the proto-molecule does. So he gets Holden to go to the ruins and remove this root that's blocking a connection there. When he does that, it's like the structure turns on. In fact, the whole planet kind of turns on. We see lightning strikes start to happen that are coordinated, but unexplained beyond the fact that it is related to whatever Holden turned on. Things continue to escalate, and eventually Holden fires a torpedo at one of the structures. While Holden is focused on the protomolecule, Amos actually works with Mercury briefly. They investigate the landing pad and find evidence that someone blew it up on purpose. That leads to open hostility from Murtry towards the Belters, and tension continues to rise between them. Amos hooks up with Chandra, one of Murtry's crew, and they have a one-season romance that ends in tragedy. He winds up at odds with Murtry as he learns more about him. At one point, he tells him he knows he's a killer, that he enjoyed killing one of the Belters right in front of everyone. He warns him from one killer to another not to mess with him or the rest of the crew. They make great adversaries, and the relationship with Chandra gives us some insight into how Amos thinks. Eventually, Murtry's group takes Amos into custody, and they go after Lucia with Naomi stepping up to try to protect her. They chase them, but they're able to escape to the Rosinante, and they go back up into orbit with Alex after Alex and Holden are able to help them get on the ship. We do learn that Lucia was responsible for blowing up the landing pad, but that she tried to stop the plan when she realized the shuttle was coming in for a landing. Her co-conspirators weren't worried about casualties and wouldn't let her stop the plan from going through. Naomi's involvement ratchets things up for Holden, and he punches Murtry in the face at one point. He goes to get Amos out of custody, intending to evacuate the planet. The Belters don't want to leave, though, and so skirmishes continue to break out and things get crazier. Before any of this can be sorted out, one of the islands on the planet explodes, and then all the reactors stop working. The planet is essentially fighting back. Fusion drives don't work. The shockwave and the tsunami from the explosion of the island will eventually force everyone on the surface to go inside the ruins to hide from the fallout. And while they're there, they start having problems with their vision, and they also come across these death slugs that will kill people if they come in contact with them. As things are moving along, Mercury reveals his motivations. They're to get a real payday from the corporation because the lithium is worth a lot, but the protomolecule tech is worth much more. In order to pull all this off, he plans on killing Holden so that he won't get in his way. So on the planet, everything's going wrong. The environment itself is causing problems. Something's going on with the protomolecule tech. Miller hasn't shown up to talk to Holden to explain what's going on there. And Murtry is essentially going psycho. While that's all going on, there's stuff going on on Earth, on Mars, and in the belt as well. Just like on Illus, or if you prefer, New Terra, we're introduced to a lot of new characters in these different locations, but I'll try to do a rough overview of just the important stuff. 
As mentioned, Bobby's on Mars and she's having trouble getting used to civilian life. She's staying with her family, she's working a job. Her nephew gets himself into some trouble. He's doing some illegal activity for a local gang. She finds out about it and beats some of them up and destroys one of their labs. And then they kidnap him, forcing her to negotiate, and she ends up having to unlock a door at her job so that they can go in and take something. She tries to go report the gang at the police station, and the person who comes to interview her is the gang leader. His name is Asai, and he is a cop. So she gets caught up. She tries to tell her boss that backfires because he wants to continue doing stuff and she doesn't want to do it. So he gets her fired and in trouble again. That puts her directly under the thumb of the gang and she goes along with them and works for them for a period of time. They have a big job coming up and she doesn't feel right about it. So she goes to visit Asai at his house and we see he's a pretty normal guy and he discounts everything that she's worried about because the payoff is big enough that he can get his family off the planet. And this is important in that he explains to her what's really going on with Mars. With the ring gates opening, the whole terraforming project and everything else that Mars has been working on for all this time suddenly doesn't make sense anymore. Why continue with the generations-long terraforming project when there's access to 1,300 new habitable systems out there? It just doesn't make sense anymore, and therefore, Mars is going to lose its power, people are going to leave, and this is part of why Abasarala is trying to stop the rush through the rings. We see her do that back on Earth, and in the process, she gets caught up in an election. Most of that serves just to flesh out the character of who Abasarala is. We see that she is a skilled politician and she's willing to do things that make everybody else around her uncomfortable. The campaign against Nancy Gao highlights her strengths and weaknesses and serves to show how different factions of the OPA are able to make things difficult for the UN in their attempt to hold things back from going crazy out at the rings. In the belt we see a number of different things play out. I mentioned that the main faction of the OPA entered into a truce with the inner planets. They established Medina Station to control the ring space, so that they have leverage and a say in what happens as people start to move through the rings. Not all of the Belders are on board though, and we get this perspective when we meet Marco Anaros. We know that he was involved with Naomi and they had a child named Philip. We knew that she had some background, but we didn't really know exactly what happened. And we hear her tell her side of the story to Lucia when they're in orbit. And we learn what really happened between them. Essentially, Marco tricked her into writing code, telling her they were going to disable ships and then they could go back and rescue them to get paid later. Instead, he used that code to overload the reactor on a ship in the docks at Luna, and that killed 516 people. She was devastated when she found out she was responsible for all those deaths, and he tried to use that and her son against her in order to keep her on his side. So she ended up leaving because she couldn't see another way out of the situation. Ashford and Drummer get Marco in custody, and he lays out his intentions vaguely to Ashford. Basically, he sees the inner planet screwing over the belt again with this expansion and brings up the real problem that many of the people who are belters can't live on those planets anyways, and their livelihoods are going to be affected as civilization moves out to these outer planets and isn't as reliant on the resources from the belt anymore. He thinks the belt has a real chance to increase their power, and when Ashford says they don't have nearly enough in the way of weapons or ships, Marco hints that there is something going on with Mars, an arrangement or something, but he doesn't lay out all the details. Either way, the OPA is about to space him for breaking the truce. They bring in the other factions, and they decide to let him speak his mind and explain his situation before they decide whether they're going to kill him. He delivers a compelling monologue, he explains his position, and offers to forfeit the money he made from taking the colony ship. The different factions are split on whether to let him live. Drummer actually breaks the tie, which shocks Ashford, but believes it's the best thing to do since the other factions were sympathetic and she knows they'll turn on him if they kill him. After they let him go, he causes problems for everyone with a ship called the Pazuza, where he rigged it to blow up, basically, but leaked information to the UN that he was going to be on it. So they had a failed attempt to escape him. That caused problems for Avasarala, and since a lot of Belters got killed in the process that were on board, that made problems for Fred Johnson's part of the OPA in that Belters thought that the Inners were killing their people. 
We see the fallout of that when Fred Johnson comes to Medina. Drummer resigns over it, and then eventually Ashford will make the decision that he's going to go after Marco and kill him himself. This essentially is the beginning of the end of Abasarola's election. She tries to salvage her campaign and leaks images of the environmental disasters on Illis, but she finally does lose to her opponent, Nancy Gao. She also strains her marriage and pisses off her husband. Back on Illis, things finally start to turn around. Elvie figures out that Holden's cancer meds are the reason why he was the only one who wasn't losing his vision, and she's able to make those meds and give them to everyone where they get their sight back. The water outside the ruins starts to recede enough for them to leave. As they're getting ready to do that, Proto Miller appears, and we see this glitching going on with the character. The real personality of Miller fights its way to the surface to talk to Holden, and he explains that this one that's wearing the hat, the one that had been talking to Holden, is the investigator. That it was basically using his corpse and is what led them to travel through the rings, knowing that they were going to turn the planet on with this active protomolecule when they got there. As I mentioned earlier, that is the directive of the protomolecule, and he says that the planet's already a corpse, and it ties into that second part of what Holden was saying at the end of Season 3, about his saying that the civilization that created the protomolecule has been destroyed. Now we see that this planet was destroyed, and that by turning it back on, Proto Miller says he found a place where the protomolecule can't go, a dead spot that kills every bit of protomolecule that it touches. So they go to find out where that is and see if they can save everybody from what's happening with the planet. Mercury's continuing to make things complicated. He's trying to take out the Rossi and their crew. The Barba Bacola is in trouble because the fusion drives don't work and it's going to eventually fall out of orbit. So we have this thing going on in orbit where the Rossi's trying to save the belters that are stuck in the Barba Bacola. Mercury and Chandra go after Holden. They're followed by Amos and Elvi. They all come together and neither side backs down. Amos has to kill Chandra and then Mertry shoots and wounds him. Holden and Miller find the thing that they're looking for. It's a remnant. They call it the bullet. It looks mysterious and no one really knows what's going on with it. LV finds Holden and tells him that Amos has been shot so he leaves. The plan is that Miller's going to figure out a way to integrate himself with something so that he can physically go through the bullet. Outside, Holden runs into Mertry. He shoots him just to disarm him. He doesn't want to kill him. And that leaves Elvie inside the room to help Miller make it to the bullet. She falls through it and she has an experience. It's not clear exactly what's going on, but Miller's self-sacrifice does work. The network shuts down. The planet turns off. The fusion drives come back on and basically the day is saved. Out in the belt, Ashford's still hunting Marco. In the process, he interviews a Martian naval officer and learns that there is a larger conspiracy going on. Unfortunately, when Ashford finds Marco, his son Philip gets the drop on him, and that sets him up to be captured and eventually spaced. He's able to record their conversation secretly, and he does send that out before he dies. And we also find out what Marco's big plan is as he launches asteroids that are covered in stealth tech towards the Earth. He says they'll never see it coming. And we see on the displays, at least eight of these things are going directly towards Earth one after the other. So that is the big setup for what the inners will be facing when the new season starts. As far as tying things up outside the ring gates, the crew and their new prisoner Mertry are back on the Rosinante. Mertry and Lucia are supposed to be put on trial, but the crew lets her go. The original Belters and the science team stay behind on Illus. They plan to rebuild things and continue to learn more about this planet. And with that, the Rosinante leave. On Mars, Bobby had stepped back from helping Asi, but she realizes that this last job they had that freaked her out was actually a trap. She tries to stop it, but she's not able to. He's killed. Most of the other people from the gang are killed. And we see that the belters that were behind it are able to get off planet. When you look closely, you can see that this is Naomi and Marco's son, Philip. So this is when they got that stealth tech that they're able to use to hide the asteroids that are hurling towards Earth. 
As mentioned, Gal wins the election. That means that the ring gates are going to be opened and that the gold rush will be on. Avasarala is really at a low point when Bobby reaches out to tell her that there's Martians trafficking military weapons with the Belters and they decide to work together. It's a little more subtle here than it is in the book, but you also figure out that Avasarala was sending Holden not because she hoped that he would be successful, but that she thought that it would be such a mess that it would work as a deterrent to stop people from traveling through the ring gates. And so that is where things end. Holden and the crew destroyed the last bit of protomolecule that was on the Rosinante, so we shouldn't see any more Miller. There is still an active protomolecule sample, the one that they gave to Fred Johnson way back when. That's presumably still at Tycho Station. We know more about Naomi's backstory now, and that she called in her favor from Fred Johnson from way back in Season 1. She'll be going looking for her son now that Marco is raising his profile as pushing back against the Inners and their plans of expansion. We see that he's quite charismatic and might turn out to be a persuasive force of resistance against the UN. We don't know what he has going on with Mars, but we do see him use Philip as part of the Free Navy, which is something that Naomi is going to be disappointed to find out. We'll mostly be leaving Illus behind. It basically works as a bridge to show all the problems that these colonists may run into whenever they go through the rings. But without giving anything away, some of these characters that were there play an important role in later books. Based on how the show repurposes some of the roles, we might even get to see more of them going forward. Rip to Ashford and to Miller. They're both going to be missed. They're fan favorite characters. Their presence will be missing in the future seasons. It'll be interesting to see how Holden adapts now that his long connection with Miller has finally come to an end. It's not clear where Drummer will land and what she'll be doing. With Mars on the way out of power, it will be nice to see Bobby and Avasarala working together again. For more discussion on what to expect in Season 5, check out the trailer breakdown I made a few weeks ago. So I guess I will leave it there. It's a long video already and I have gone over mostly everything that happened. I do have an ending explained video that I made right after the season came out last year. If you want more talk about the politics and what's happening, that goes into a lot more of that. I will be covering Season 5 with regular weekly videos, so make sure you subscribe to my channel. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about Season 4 and what you're excited about for Season 5 in the comments. And thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.